Oh my god, those songs are so dope. Like 13 Avia. Fala com a gente, Gala Sua Night. E eu sou a Isa. E o que, que a gente veio fazer aqui hoje? Hoje a gente tem um vídeo muito especial pra vocês. A gente vai fazer uma entrevista com o BM. Meu Deus! Sim, gente. Meu Deus! BM do Card. BM, welcome. So please, can you introduce yourself? Say hi to Brazil. Everybody knows you, but. Olá, Brasil. Uh, eu sou o BM. <laughs> oh! The Portuguese is so good! Amazing. Thank you! I cut out my like will stay or I will surrender my daughter. Assim, ele do Card, gente. Todo mundo aqui no Brasil ama ele. A gente uhum. é muito fã dele. E vocês sabem que a gente já tipo, encontrou com ele no encontro e já fomos sim. em vários shows. Vocês sempre pedem, meu Deus! Traz mais conteúdo de Card! <risos> a gente precisa falar de Card, sim, precisamos falar sobre Card. E por isso trouxemos aqui uma entrevista com o Bien. Acabou de lançar o seu projeto solo! Sim, solo project! Uh! Yeah! We're talking about your solos. Yes. And we love your songs so much. Yes. So thank you for meeting with us and agreeing to do this interview. We're so happy. We're such big fans. We think you're awesome how does it feel like to be like on your own right now for a little bit um it's interesting i mean normally i come out with my members it's the first time i've ever come out officially as a solo it feels good i mean i think uh the vision has come to life well so uh i'm happy i'm very happy with it you're from la right matt oh. and talk us through your process of like becoming a musician and entertainer was that something you've always wanted is that was that always a dream of yours no not at all it's crazy um So when I was in LA, I was dancing a lot. I was attending college and I was a part of a choreography team that uh, competed in LA. Yeah, that's all I was doing. And then uh, my mom was very worried about me because I spent more time dancing than I did studying. So she said, uh, <laughs> so she said, why don't you try? Yeah, 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 like typical mom stuff. But she said, um, why not try doing something on a bigger scale? Why not go out to Korea and try to dance professionally out there? Maybe be a performer. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know any Korean. I don't know any Korean music. It was like 10 years ago. And then she was like, why don't you go out in an audition program? And I was like, I'm not going out no audition program. No way. I don't know anything. Like, what do I know? And she was like, um, there's going to be a celebrity there. But was going to be there. And I was like, oh, a celebrity? Okay, all right, all right, I'll go. By some God-given divine miracle, I made it to top 50 of a show called K-Pop Star. I watched it. I loved yeah. your season. It was so good. Yeah. Oh my god. I only came out once because I did so bad. Like, they told me the producers, no matter how well they wanted to make me look and how well they wanted to uh, edit the video so that I don't look bad, they couldn't do it. So, I only came out once. <laughs> But that one time I came out was the time I dropped. But they did a good job making me look good. So, um, yeah, I mean, after that, uh, one thing led to another. I joined DSP as a trainee. And then uh, 2016, I debuted. Everybody in the beginning, when you look back in your career, always say, like, oh, I was so bad at it. But yeah, looking back now, there's no way you were that bad. No, definitely not. I was pretty not. bad. <laughs> I was pretty not bad. Really. <laughs> And how was your trainee days in Korea? What was the best part about it? And what, what was the hardest part about it? Oh man, I mean, the, I, I, there's yeah. pros and cons. There's goods and bads to being a trainee. The good thing yeah. is you have all the time in the world to train, you know, you, everything is just practice. Um, but the bad thing is you don't know when you're going to debut. You don't know when that process is going to end. So you feel like you're training and training and training and training. And it, it feels like a never-ending tunnel where you don't see the end of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. When it comes and, and you're finally done with the process, it feels good. When, when I first heard from my company that I will be now signing the artist contract, that was like one of the happiest days of my life. Till How that day. They tell you, I think... Uh, Like three months in advance. For oh, for me it was six months in advance. Yeah, I, I believe either three or six. But um, until that day, it's a pretty rough process. And I'm not talking about physically. It's more of a mental and emotional, uh, you know, struggle, trying to wait and trying to see when the next chapter of your life starts. Because it's not under yeah. your control fully. Do you have I any be language barriers or? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I couldn't speak any Korean. 
in the beginning when I first came here. Obviously, the culture shock, you know, it's, it's, I, I've been an LA boy my entire life and then I come here. Yeah. It's so different. It's so different. There's hierarchy here. Uh, even if you're one year apart from someone, you have to respect them very, very much. I mean, in that sense, it wasn't that hard because in LA, I gave respect because I, I wanted to gain respect. So every, with everyone, younger or older, it was respect with me. But uh, getting used to it, uh, having my hangs look up to me, and then having like my peers and my same age people look up to people older, it was interesting. I was like, okay, this is like something I got to get used to. You know that the Brazilian audiences, they love you. We love Card. Yeah. You guys have such chemistry together and you guys are so fun to watch. But the songs that you make, like the music you guys produce, it just speaks a lot to our hearts. Yeah. You know, like Brazilian hearts. We just love the type of songs that you guys put out. What was the best experience that you guys had that you had while in Brazil? Every time we go to Brazil, I've never had a dull moment it's just always so fun i mean it's it's a new place to me well it was a new place right now it's 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 a very familiar place now because we receive so much love and support there i feel so refreshed because everyone's smiling everyone's playing everyone's playful everyone's just in a good mood and a good vibe you know what i mean yeah that's brazil this is brazil this is <laughs> yeah. brazilian people i love it i love it the best part about becoming well known in brazil is San Paulo is is my dad's hometown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we know. So, so being know. able to learn the culture and and see the people of where my dad grew up was just it was so, it was so beautiful. I was like, oh okay, this is why my dad is so cool. And while you were here in Brazil, did you get to try any Brazilian food? And what was your favorite? I've been eating Brazilian food since I was very young because my dad is from Brazil. So, um, pão de queijo, guaraná, that's all, I've been eating that my entire life. Talking about our, our state! Our state! Our pão state. de queijo is from our state. Yeah, so, like, of course, <laughs> every Brazilian eats pão de queijo, de queijo. Yeah. but our state's culture is like pão de queijo culture. Where was it again? Minas, Minas Gerais. Ah, Minas. Belo Horizonte. Belo Horizonte is like the capital of Minas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we have like the best, like, baker shops. Baker shops. Ooh. Yeah. The Amazing. bakery culture in our state is like superior. I think when we were there, the hotel had like several types of pão de queijo, I think. From what yeah. I remember, yeah. We have places just to eat pão de queijo. It's because here. we can stuff it with like any type of cheese Ooh. and like like toppings meat. and like meat and like... You can uh, make like a sandwich with pão de queijo. Yeah, the best part for me is like when you just get it out of the oven and it's mm. super duper hot and you open it and you put a little bit of butter oh. and it just melts Perfect. right in. It's so it's good! So good. So good. I feel like eating pão de queijo right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I almost like drip like spit just now. I'm like salivating right now thinking about it. So your dad is from Brazil. Like we, we read online that he has lived in Brazil, but now you've corrected us. He's from Brazil actually. Yeah, he, he moved to Brazil when he was 11. You take the fact that you guys have such a massive following in Brazil. Like how was his reaction? I don't know. I was like, the first thing I told him, I was like, Dad, you gotta start teaching me Portuguese now. <laughs> I need to learn. Yeah, because like, you guys are so famous here. You really, yeah. Yeah, you really are. You're really famous. It was it was crazy. He he was first and foremost very happy. He was very happy that I was able to, you know, become well known in, in, in Brazil. It's crazy because um, my dad's side of the family, they all speak Portuguese with each other. They don't speak Korean. Oh my God. Yeah. So you're familiar like with Portuguese with sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the 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 connotation and like uh, the way it differentiates from Spanish and, and other languages. I can hear it. I've been able to hear it yeah. since I was young. Beautiful language though. And it's so cool. Like they would speak Portuguese with themselves. I wouldn't know what they're saying, but it just sounds so cool. Like a bunch of Koreans not speaking Korean but in Portuguese. Like it was dope. Imagine that <laughs> so cool. Like <laughs> Yeah. All my cousins know how to speak Portuguese. I'm the last one out of my dad's family. The Portuguese stopped right when I was born. So my cousin that's one year older than me, he speaks Portuguese. I wish I learned so bad. But you know what? Portuguese, it's sort of like there's a lot of similar words to English. Yeah. I feel like if you can learn. Were, yeah, you could learn, learn if you tried it. Yeah. Especially because you're really good at Korean and, Engli and English, so you probably have an easier, easier. time. Yeah. You know what I need to do? I need to go back to Brazil now. I want to. I miss Brazil so much. 
Yeah, we should eat pão de queijo. Yes, Ooh. we're inviting you officially. Pão de queijo with meat. Yeah, also mm. good. And guarana. Oh my god, guarana. Oh, yeah. so I love it. I love it. Okay. Okay. I'm not Let's hungry. move on. Not hungry. Otherwise, we're going to be speaking about food all <laughs> We can't yeah. do that. <laughs> So in 2018, you guys toured 30 countries with CARD, the Wild Card Tour. How was that experience for you? Do you miss being on tour? How is that like? Honestly, for me, the touring is the best part about being an artist. Because when you're on tour, you, you get to be more intimate and you see the fans face to face. Like, you know, all this Instagram and Twitter and, and all that, that's cool. You know, YouTube comments, DMs, you know, comments here and there, that's all cool. but it's not as real say, as yeah. being there you know and just really yeah. vibing off of little little stuff like facial expressions you know fans happy to see me like when i see that i take it in so deep and it gives me so much more energy on stage and to take back with me to korea when we make new music and a lot of my music that i make is is based on emotions i feel or um, experiences I've been through so it has a huge effect the fans have a huge effect on my work ethic as well so I miss it I miss it so much we miss having you on tour oh I miss it I miss it too I miss it too I think it's really those moments that that pay off you know it's not the money yes. it's not the fame it's the intimate yeah. little moments you have with the fans so, like this is my favorite question oh my god we were setting up the questions this is the one like i'd be damned if i don't ask him that we need to talk about that i'm a big podcast fan okay i've been <laughs> listening to podcasts my whole life that's how i learned a lot of my english wow I'm listening to podcasts yeah and yours get, get real, real podcast, podcast with ashley and Peniel. like i love you guys like you're chemistry it's been a while since i've like came across like a good podcast with people that had real chemistry talking together and experiencing and sharing stuff we love you guys together so how did it come about like that pro how did that happen i've watched you talk about the first kiss you got you had like that was so <laughs> funny you were talking about your first kiss i laughed so hard <laughs> Yeah, I talk a lot of crazy stuff on that podcast because it's not a... It is censored, but they don't censor me. They don't filter me. So I say whatever I want to say on that podcast. Um, it's really yeah. real. Like, we feel like we get to know you as people other than, like, idols. Yeah, How did that come about? How do you guys get together? How did that happen? I got a call one day from Eric, Eric Nam. And then um, he was like, hey, are you interested in doing a podcast? I think you would do well. And I asked him, uh, is it, is, am I going to be running it by myself or am I going to have other host mates? He said, you'll probably have host mates. Like, you know, do you have any, any people in mind? One thing led to another. It ended up being me, Ashley, and Peniel. I mean, we, we just finished our first season at the 55th episode, I believe. It, apparently, it did really well. People were, you know, really entertained by it because we were just talking a bunch of whole, whole bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's so fun. So when do you guys record it? It's like, is it once a week? Is it once... A month like uh, it's different every time I think we record we bulk record most of the time so we'll get at most four episodes done um, every I want to say three to four weeks um, but if we have to do another one or we have if we have a guest coming in we'll have it done we'll, we'll, we'll probably shoot like at most three times a month it's like you're talking with just friends it doesn't feel like work that's how we feel with each other. Yeah, yeah when we're, we're recording we're our videos, and, we were just feeling like we're just talking. Yeah, we're like BFFs and we talk room. about yeah. our lives and then we're recording. Be. Is there going to be a season two? Please tell me it will. Uh, things are being talked about right now. Things are being organized. Um, I don't know exactly when because everyone is... Um, you know, they, they have a lot of their own, th own own stuff going on right now. But, I mean, a lot of people are going to be mad if we don't have a season two, so... You're one of those people. people. Yeah. <laughs> do. do it. Like, our mental health depends on it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, I mean, if you put it like that, then I have to do it. I care about if you have time or not. Make time. Make time for it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's going to be a season two. There's going to be another season <laughs> You heard it here first. This is the first I won't say when, but there will be a comeback. Oh, no, you can keep it to yourself, like, yeah. gosh, no spoilers, but that's, that's enough. That's enough. Yeah. That's enough. Like, okay, we're excited. We're excited. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, you yeah. heard it here first. Exclusive. <laughs> not the TV. TV exclusive. <laughs> exclusive, let's go. So now, now let's talk about your solo work. Yeah. The first statement EP, you just released it. And in June, you released your first 
saw a video broken me it was amazing we love it all, we were uh, listening to it right we're before listening we started to it. we really felt the shift the difference between your solo sound and the sound you have with card yeah. so how involved were you in the process of making this song 100 percent. every song every song ha had my full involvement um obviously it was co-written and co-produced with um various producers but it all started from my head i mean so what happened what, with those three songs i'll try to keep it as short as possible so 13 ivi i, I went to uh my uh my guy's studio my guy's squar i told him hey do you have any beats that's just laying around for me to be on and he let me listen to like two or three i was like mm, these are good these are okay yeah and then uh, he was like wait let me open up my um production garbage can so like, where he kept his garbage, like his garbage folder, and then he let me listen to the 13 IVI beat, and I was like, why is this in this folder? I took it home, I wrote the hook in like, like, really quick, just like that. We had, we had the title song ready. Everyone who heard it was like, yo, this is title song worthy and we need to put this out. This is great. This is great content. It's so BM. And then the other two songs, they were written with... Apex, which is a production house that I joined as a songwriter. I went to them and I was like, hey, I need I need beats. Give me some beats. Like I, I can produce my own beats, but I, I want, as far as quality goes, I want the highest quality. So, And they let me hear this rock beat and they let me hear this house beat. And I was like, I've never done anything like this before. I don't know if I could do this, but let me have it. Give it to me. So I took it home with me. And then everything I wrote for those two songs, I loved it. But in my head, I was like, this sounds like it would be for someone else. You know what I mean? Like, this sounds like we could just write a demo to sell to someone else. But while I was recording it, for Broken Me, we were me and me and my guy Isaac, who's the chief producer of Apex, he was just like, yo, what did you do? I was like, what did I do? He was like, dude, you're killing it right now. I was like, yeah? He was like, yeah. And then we started on Body Moving, and then after that, he was just like, he was just mind blowing. He was like, "What? Why does this sound so good?" And then, and then I was just like, "Should I pitch it to my company?" He's like, "Yeah, let's try." And then I, I, I brought those three songs to my company. They already love 13 IVI and four other songs. I pitched it to them. And then out of all those six songs, they said "Body Moving" and "Broken Me" were the best. So we ended up putting out that album. But you know, as far as participation goes, you know, the songwriting, the lyricism, and the top lining, it was, it was really fun. It was really fun doing all that. Oh my god, those yeah. songs are so amazing. dope. Like 13 Avia. Hey, yeah. Guy, every time you kept saying like 13 Avia, like the, the, the beat just came out. Like. <laughs> right? It hits hard. We are very like big fans of like K-dramas. So we talk a lot about K-dramas on our channel as well. So we have a lot of K-drama watchers out here as well as K-pop fans. Um. So in the um, Broken Me music video, you have Pak on Sok. He plays Logan yeah. on the Penthouse, the Penthouse series. And we love it. We love him. We, we love, love like <laughs> Penthouse. We were watching we watch Penthouse, Penthouse <laughs> like the last episode before we met with you. So how did that come about as well? Like. Are you guys friends? Well, well he, we became friends now. Um, I look to him more as like a big bro type of guy. Yeah, I mean, it was crazy. Uh, he was casted for the short film with uh, a, a virtual tech company called Vive Studios, a virtual production company. And they were making a short film to, to showcase what they could do with their technology. And he was the main actor that was casted for that role. And that film needed an OST, which Broken Me, the English version, was, you know, more than blessed to be a privilege to be the OST for. But um, I got to witness his acting in real life. It was crazy. He would do the same line, like, I witnessed it, I witnessed him doing it five times. It's different every time, but the emotion is just intense every time. I thought I was watching Penthouse in like real life. I, I, I thought I was on set because I love Penthouse too. Yeah, no, really, yeah. Because he's my fa favorite character too, so when... He's yeah. everyone's favorite character. Yeah. He is in real life too. His English name is Danny. Like, he is a really, really nice guy. You know how when you see celebrities sometimes, you would just imagine them to be like, you know, they, oh, what if they're like mean? What if they're like, you know, like, um cocky like tough and like kind yeah. of that there's none of that there's none of that 
Like to him, to his caliber of an actor, you know, I wouldn't have been surprised if he kind of like, you know, built walls and whatnot. But he just he just seemed like a cool dude. Like he was just a really, really cool person. I was just like, oh dang. I became a fan even more. So for the second MV your of your solo project, 13 IVI, you present us with a song about how you envision yourself as a king since 2013. What is that about? Is that about your experiences or was that when you've decided to pursue music? What does 2013 mean? So this is, I'll tell you guys a crazy story. Um, so I'm not the most religious guy, right? But um, there was one day in 2013 where I had a dream, a very lucid and very vivid dream where I died in my dream. And then um, I remember in the dream, after I died, I just had my eyes closed and it was pitch black. And I was crying. I was crying like crazy because I was like, well, the only thing I was thinking is, is, this is it. I'm either gonna go to hell or heaven. Oh God, please let me go to heaven, please. Like, that's what I was thinking. And then all of a sudden I hear a voice, which at the time I, I believed to be God, telling me to look at a, a certain Bible verse. At the time I, I didn't even care. I was just like, God, just let me go to heaven, please. I want to go to heaven. You know, don't let me go to hell, please. And then boom, I wake up, my face is drenched in tears. And I'm just like, oh my God. It was the most realest dream ever. Like, I thought I was really dead. It just felt so real. And I go to the living room and I sit down. I'm like, oh man, that was intense. Like, like I, I'm still breathing hard. I'm just like, man. Like, that was crazy. And then after like uh, 10 minutes of just chilling, something clicked in my head. And I remember the Bible, Bible verse he told me to read. It was a verse in Daniel and I read it. And then the title of the, of the verse was King Nebuchadnezzar's Dream. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know anything what that meant. I, I was I read it. I was like, okay, what does this mean? So I I um, had a friend at the time who was a little bit more religious and, and stronger in faith. So I sent it to her. I was like, hey, what does this mean? I, I I had a dream. I died. God told me to read this. I don't know what this means. And she was like, um, I mean, I'm I'm not too sure, but I think maybe God's trying to make you a king of somewhere. You know, maybe king of K-pop. I don't know. And I was just like, oh, that's a little bit too much for me I'm just a regular dude like what king like that's kind of it's kind of too much for me and then I just go about my day I completely forget about this dream and it's just it's just the past past is past and then I'm training I go through it all I go through my anxiety I go through my depression I go through just everything I go through everything and then 2016 my company tells me I'm finally gonna debut after all the years of, of, of going through all those struggles I'm like, cool, what's the name of the group? And they were like, Card. And then I was like, Card, that's weird. What does it mean? And then they were like, well, every character is gonna, every member is gonna have a playing card character. That's gonna be your character. It's gonna be a king, an ace, a joker, and a hidden card. And I was like, whoa, cool. And obviously me being a guy, I was like, I kinda wanna be king. I didn't say it, but in my head, I was like, I wanna be king. And then my company told me, okay, you're going to be the king card. And I was like, Ty, I'm the king. Nice. I called my mom that day. I was like, oh, ma, uh, guess, who, guess who's debuting? And she was like, you. And I was like, yep. And then she was like, uh, so what's the group name? I was like, card. And then I'm the king card. Isn't that crazy? And she was like, hey, have you talked to your friend from church in a while? And I was like, no. Why? She was like, remember the dream you had? I was like... Oh my god, like like goosebumps just went through my whole body. Like God sent you like a word, like yeah. a revelation. He sent it to you in, in a dream. What are the chances of me being told in a dream to read a verse and then that verse being depicted by a friend telling me that I'm going to be king of K-pop maybe or something and then three years later, I'm king card. What are the chances? That's how God works, though. Yeah, we don't understand it at first, yeah. but then it makes no sense it at first. And you're like, oh, yeah. So that's what. That's meant. what happened. Crazy. Yeah. That's like wow. that was the the peak of the interview. <laughs> yeah. Me, not gonna lie, Crazy. I was not expecting that. Every time I tell this story, I get goosebumps when I say that goosebumps. But it's yeah. Like, we're, we're, no, I mean, really? No really. joke. Like that's one of the best stories I've ever heard. I'm not saying it for like. 
for like interviews. It was like, really, that's, that's it was so amazing. Like, I would tell your story to like my grandma that doesn't know you. Like that's so like the story. <laughs> no, well, let me tell you about something. <laughs> I met a guy and once to told me like really like check this out. Like I would tell my friends like that don't listen to K-pop. This like hear this out. Like this dude. I'm like, gonna tell my mom. <laughs> like, I'm tell gonna tell them all. My mom, my mom is super religious. Definitely. Like my 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 family is very faith based. Yeah, my, my so my mom too. called me like. A half an hour ago, and she was like, "I'm praying that God will speak to you guys in this interview." Yeah, and it sort of did happen. Yeah, hey, let's go. Wow. <laughs> so, speaking of God and the future and dreams, like, what are some of your future goals in your career? Like, anything? You know, every artist's dream is to be as I want to say skilled and have their own color, and to be. You know, recognized for that color. So I think for me, I'm I'm in the process right now. I feel like I just drew the line for the start. I I I just took that first step from the starting line. Where am I gonna go from here? I'm trying not to look too far ahead as far as um, you know the end goal. I feel like I just want to be able to keep going. I wanna I wanna try a whole lot of different more genres and make it all sound like the BM sound. You know so. Um, for me, I just want to be an artist that can continue to do what he does for the long run. Like, I want to be 40 and still be sexy making songs, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you will, because yeah. you're off to an amazing start, Thank like, you. on your solo, like, endeavors. So good. When we listened, the first time we listened to, really? like, Broken Me, yeah. it was like a visceral feeling, like, yeah. is this BM? Like, but at the same time, what? it was. Wait, wait, wait. What what you know what I feel mean? it was you, it but, was but you? like it's so different. But at yeah. the same time, it was a, huge, a whole new facet of you. Yeah. Like, is this rock? Like, it's what giving me like 2006 emo vibes, but it's BM. Yeah. So it's really, really hard. hard to give me goosebumps, and yeah. I and I had it while uh, watching your music video and hearing the song. We were talking to our friends, and yeah. oh my god, this all worked. It's so amazing yeah, it's because we work with music every day we yeah. have two youtube channels and we talk about a lot about k-pop and western music as well so we listen to a to lot of music, music. We, we live music and yours is like so good i'm not saying it for like entertainment sake yeah. we were talking with our friends like days earlier yeah yeah you're a true artist like yeah. when somebody first debuts we don't we don't really know them we know that you're like hot and you can dance and whatever yeah. but <laughs> like now you're like such an artist like congratulations if you guys feel like that now wait till you see the next ones I have cooking up right now. There's no hey, James, wow. there's no release date as of now, but I continue to be in the studio. I continue to meet with my producers, and um, we continue to write. I have a lot of stuff getting ready already, so okay. really excited. Okay, stop. Okay, like, we're, we're, I might cry. Uh, so yeah, stop. my heart might stop beating. And it's a completely different BM this time too. So for our last for question. our last question, for entertainment's sake, <laughs> um, we would like to ask you what is the most famous person you have on your phone's contact list? Who is the most famous person like you befriended while being an idol? As of now, let me check. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right, it. Now, right, right now, right now, right now, 2021 live. live. My zoom exclusive on yeah. TV. I mean, honestly, as far as Fame goes, a Park Eun Seok is one of them. Danny, he's, uh, yeah. yeah. Eun Seok Hyung is definitely one of them. Um, Jesse. Jesse is probably the one with the most followers right now. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's so her. huge. We love her so much. We love much. her. Hey, she's, she's such a cool person. When I did a song with her, she was just so laid back and so cool. Very helpful, too. Stray Kids. Oh! We have so many Stray Kids fans We're on the lot. channel. They're gonna hey, stray. You guys gotta understand, those those kids are such good people. Like, they're such good kids. Yeah, they're really they good seem like They seem life, like it, know? yeah. How they are on camera is just how they are in real life. Really? Yeah, just more professional. It's so amazing to know that the people we like We are admire really good are good people yeah. in real life. Yeah. yeah, we feel like we need more of those in entertainment. Definitely. So.
Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for you, having really. us. For real, like we love you so much. We love your songs and we love your your music and yeah. your whole persona. Like you're such a laid back, cool guy. Yeah. And as we're saying, like it's really amazing yeah. to meet a person you admire, and this yeah. person is really nice. And you are one of these people. Thank you so much. And Cards Fan Sign was the first like K-pop event that we went together. Yeah. As hey. a duo. yeah. It was even before we started our channel. I love yeah. it. So I that's something it. special. Hey. That's a special thing. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to say anything to your Brazilian? fans yeah. i mean first and foremost i miss you guys like crazy uh, i miss brazil i miss the food so much you're invited to eat bunch queijo with yeah. us anytime, well, when anytime I'm in, you, you said belly horizonte right belly horizonte okay when i'm there yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna oh i'm gonna gain like 10 pounds of just straight up on the queijo. yeah that, that you that, should that's yeah it. that's it Oh. It's worth it. It's our life. Yeah. <laughs> for the fans, I you know, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for the support. Um, thank you for supporting my first solo. And um, I got more coming. The next ones are gonna be very different. Um, I'll just put it I'll just put it like this. It's gonna be more bright. It's gonna be much more bright. Matthew wow. dropped the mixtape right now oh and no one God. gets hurt. Hey, if I was up to right me, now. if it was up to me and I had all my own money to fund it, I would do it right now. Oh my, god. oh my god, we're really excited for your next next work. Yeah. It's gonna be a much more smooth BM and when I say smooth, I don't mean like oh actually I'll just I'll just leave it up to your imagination. <laughs> oh you're not gonna let us sleep tonight. Yep, no. yep. <laughs> that means that he's gonna show us right now. No, I'm <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm, so. I don't know. I don't know. Baby off camera? <risos> gente, muito obrigada pra quem chegou até aqui. A gente ama esse menino demais. demais. Muito obrigada pra quem ficou até aqui. Gente, se inscreve no canal, dá, dá um like nesse vídeo. vídeo. Comenta o que você achou dessa entrevista, que a gente quer muito saber. Sim. And if you want BM again, just, you know, ask, ask for more. <risos> então, muito obrigada por estar até aqui. Se inscreve no canal, vai acompanhar o trabalho desse menino maravilhoso. E é isso, gente. Um beijo. Um beijo. Adiós. Muito obrigado.